Hello, it's finally time to do a new video on my channel, I suppose. This channel tries to be some kind of vlog, that's the original goal at least. Haven't really managed to produce any content for it. Life is quite busy at the moment and for the foreseeable future. Nevertheless, I'll try to keep this uh, short and simple. Um, one of the projects that I have is to build a flight simulator. A new flight simulator is going to be a very long project and especially in my case it got even longer because it sort of branched out into little side projects based on the flight simulator. And one of the things that you need on a flight simulator is that you have the hardware with the panels and uh, buttons, displays, whatnot. You have your computer software with the simulator running. You need some kind of glue in between, right, to make the data flow. Uh, get the button presses delivered to the computer and so on. And there are quite some ready-made solutions for that. Um, I'm not going to go into those. Also, you could quite easily use something like an Arduino. But in my case, it has sort of escalated. And the situation I'm currently in is that I have my own design. It's a modular design and I thought it'd be cool to slightly take a look at the design iterations that led me to this point where I am now. It's not perfect. There will be, I suppose, still more iterations to come, but it's I find it pretty neat myself. So that's the topic for today's video. There, there are plenty of other topics to cover, but um, I guess we'll get started. So yeah, this is where it all started, I guess, in 2019. Um, up until this point, I was planning to use probably something like Arduino Mega to do all the interfacing with the panels. But then at some point I got introduced to these little chips here, these multiplexers. So these are the CD4051s, analog multiplexers. They provide eight channels that you can um, select with three pins. So you have three channel select pins and then one pin that you can use as an input or output. And sort of, it just started from here because I wanted to play with these things. So I made this kind of board where I could mount a Arduino. But yeah, in the end it didn't work as I wanted it to work. So I moved on pretty quickly. Uh, I made a redesign. This time I made it way smaller because I wanted to produce it um, somewhere else. In this case, you can, I suppose, guess it's an Oshpar PCB. But it has the same idea. It's basically the same thing as the big board. Um, this time, of course, you can't put an Arduino on it. It's so small, but it has space for a Mega 328. So the same MCU as in the Arduino. Um, but yeah. I mean, in the end, this was a terrible idea. So I, I never got to really <laughs> populate it. I started working on it. I think I started crimping the wires and they were so such a pain in the ass to crimp. It's a really tiny connector that I, I just uh, gave up on it and instead moved on. And then came actually the first iteration of what I call stack tricks. A stackable modular design where you have these little pieces. Let me see. How do I? Let's put it this way. You have these little pieces that you can use to make, um, combine them in whatever way. One of the pieces would act as the gateway module, which would run the um, Ethernet, and then the other modules would talk with um, I2C bus with each other. And the design was okay, um, but it was kind of stupid because the connectors are just on one side, so it's super flimsy. Like it was a proof of concept, it worked, but I went on to uh, well, I went on to um, improve it. So then we came with the second version of st Stack Tricks, and this one has connectors on both sides. On the bottom side, we have the space for the Ethernet. So this one goes like this, yes. 
on the bottom side like this. And then you would be able to put other stuff on top of it. From Stacktrix 2 onwards, it's using um, Tiny. So for example, this gateway, it has a... Um, I guess it's visible. Tiny 814. 8 kilobytes of flash. And it does Ethernet. And runs the I I2C bus. Plenty of space. But that's because I'm not using um, any standard protocols. But I'll talk about those later. And yeah, this is currently pretty much the the final shape of the iteration. I have made a 2.1 version, which has fixed the issues found so far in 2.0. There is also this kind of big board. So it's not necessary to mount them on top of each other. Ethernet goes here, right? This module would go here. So yeah, here we have a couple of modules. Um, the left one is the I.O. module, which provides eight inputs and eight outputs. So it supports a key matrix of 64 buttons. But it also has uh, these kind of um, extension pins, which allow it to, you can mount an expander on top of it, which gives eight additional outputs. So in the end, you can have 8 times 16, so 128, which is enough to support, for example, the MCDU should be enough for all the use cases in the simulator. The max module, it can run uh, seven segments, 8 times 8, so 64 LEDs. I have a PWM module that I haven't assembled yet, but it can modulate 12 volt input for driving backlight. So that's that's useful. What else do you need a simulator? Rotary encoders and potentiometers? Well, those I don't have a module yet for, but that's gonna be an exercise for later to design those. Yeah, so here is the power distribution board or whatever you want to call it. It has a 12 volt input. Some protection elements, there's a fuse and a reverse blocking, reverse current blocking diode. And then we have a 5 volt switching regulator. And then we have the module placements. There are some, uh, well, the I I2C, there's an extra pull up here, possibility to add I2C pull ups, because one of at least the 2.0 iteration didn't have uh, pull ups, except for the internal pull ups of the tiny. Yeah, that's about it. So I guess I'll talk to you later. Thanks for dropping by.